Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com. Back in April, I showed you guys the Backyard Sniper Rifle, a suppressed Savage Mark II bolt action 22 long rifle specifically configured for the mission of defending my garden and chickens. The parameters of that mission have changed somewhat over the last few months, so of course I had to set up a new gun. I thought you guys might want to see what I came up with. So first, let's take a look at the hardware and then I'll go into the why behind everything. The gun is a Ruger 1022, except not really. I assembled it from various parts, only a few of which actually came from Ruger. The custom 1022 world is new territory for me. I did know that it was possible to build a 1022 without any actual Ruger parts, but I was actually kind of surprised at just how easy it was once I started the process. This is not a tutorial video. There are already tons of useful resources out there for that, but it's a pretty straightforward process. You just need a receiver, a barrel, a stock, a trigger assembly, a bolt assembly, and some miscellaneous hardware, and that's it. For this rifle, I used a Magpul Hunter stock Brownells receiver, Tactical Solutions X-Ring barrel, a Kid Innovative Design bolt assembly, bolt handle and buffer, a Ruger BX trigger pack, that includes the trigger group, the safety and the mag release, and I replaced the Ruger bolt release with a Volkortsen automatic bolt release, that's the little silver part you can see peeking out there. That's it for the rifle itself. It's a pretty simple design. The barrel is secured with a couple of screws. The bolt and the trigger group just drop right in. Uh, all the complicated stuff is inside the bolt and trigger assemblies. And uh, most of those come pre-assembled so you don't really have to mess with them if you don't want to. Moving on to accessories, the optic is a Leupold FX1. That's a fixed four power rimfire scope. The suppressor and light are the same ones I had on the Savage, a Silencer Co. Sparrow and a Streamlight TLR1 HL. And this beautiful sling is from Trunk Monkey Designs. It's sporting a delightful pattern they call the wood house. I had been pretty content with my Savage bolt action, like I mentioned in that other video. It's been my go-to rifle for almost a decade for pest control and plinking. It's a heavy rifle, but that wasn't a big deal because I didn't ever have to really carry it very far. But the circumstances have changed a little. Our growing chicken family has been relocated from their coop to an old barn. The barn is a little farther away from the house than the previous chicken coop was. And it's also sometimes mistaken for a supermarket by the local raccoon population. So I found myself carrying my 22 around the property more often and taking shots at longer range. I also could no longer guarantee headshots only like I prefer. Sometimes I had to take multiple shots to make sure those things were all the way dead. Here's a great example. I caught this guy red-handed. There goes my stream light. I was 40 yards away up on a hill behind the trail cam, so my backstop is the ground, not the barn. He's about to get whacked as soon as he walks off camera here in a second, but it took four rounds. That was on a moving target from a standing unsupported position. That is when I decided that a nine pound bolt action is maybe not the best poultry protector. So began the quest for Hen Guardian 2.0 with the following criteria. It had to be semi-auto and lightweight, ideally six pounds or less loaded with a suppressor, optics, light, and sling. It had to be accurate, which for my purposes means uh, about two MOA or better using everyday non-match grade ammo. And I wanted premium quality parts but within a moderate budget. I'm not ready to spend 2000 bucks on a full custom Volkortsen rifle, but just because it's a 22 doesn't mean it has to feel like a cheap toy either. I wanted the feel and the performance of a serious rifle, so I set a budget of $800, not including accessories. The obvious route for a project like this is a build-it-yourself 1022. Like I said before, putting the rifle together turned out to be super easy. The hard part was deciding which parts to buy. That is quite a rabbit hole to go down. I ended up reading, I can't even count how many reviews, articles, and online discussions about various 1022 components. I still feel like a novice on that topic, but if I can offer any advice for someone who's looking into this, I suggest that you decide in advance your budget and what you actually want to do with the rifle. What does it need to be good at? 
that will go a long way toward helping you figure out what parts to use. There's a ton of good advice out there, but context is important. Don't feel like you have to use a specific part just because a bunch of nerds on some forum said it's the best. If they're looking to maximize accuracy for bench rest shooting and you want a lightweight backpacking rifle, then you're gonna have different priorities. For this build, I had to make a couple of tough decisions in order to stay under budget. I ended up saving a lot of money by going with a Brownells receiver and the Ruger BX trigger pack. The Brownells receiver is fairly basic and that is completely fine for my purposes. Unlike the factory version, it does have an integral Picatinny rail, so that's just one less potential failure point for the optic. Most 1022 trigger assemblies cost two to four times as much as the Ruger BX trigger. This is Ruger's improved version of their standard 1022 trigger. So it breaks at uh, about three and a half pounds on this one. And uh, it's not bad, but I do miss the kind of two stage feel of that Savage Accu trigger. I can always upgrade the trigger later if I want. This one is adequate for now. And it allowed me to spend more money on parts that are probably more important. About half my budget went to the barrel and the bolt assembly. Together, those parts are kind of like the heart and soul of the rifle, especially the barrel. This kind of looks like a stainless steel fluted bull barrel, but it's not. It is a Tactical Solutions X-Ring barrel, which is a lightweight aluminum sleeve over a rifled steel insert. By itself, the barrel weighs just 15 ounces. It's also proven to be plenty accurate, Lately, my favorite everyday affordable 22 load has been CCI standard velocity 40 grain lead round nose. With that load, I am consistently getting groups between a half inch and one inch at 50 yards. That's one to two MOA, which is well within the standard I was hoping for and at least as accurate as my Savage. The Magpul stock was kind of a no brainer. Magpul shotgun stocks have worked really well for me in the past and the 1022 Hunter stock has the same basic shape and feel. The comb height and the length of pull are both adjustable and of course it's got lots of M-lock slots in the front for accessories. After taxes, shipping, etc., the total cost of the rifle before accessories was $792.00 eight bucks under budget. The rifle alone weighs four and a half pounds. That's the same as a basic Ruger 1022 with a synthetic stock. With all the accessories and a loaded mag, it is 6.3 pounds. So just a little over my target weight, but it's close enough. It's still very light, handy, and well-balanced much more convenient to carry around than the 8.7 pound Savage. The loophole scope is one component I'm not quite sure about. I have a Vortex Diamondback 2 to 7 on the Savage. It's an excellent practical rimfire optic, especially for the price. I thought about just moving that scope over to this rifle. However, I have had my eyes on this loophole fixed four power for several years and I really wanted to try it out mostly because it weighs next to nothing. On my scale, it came to 7.2 ounces, so roughly half the weight of the Vortex. It turns out that a super lightweight scope is every bit as cool as I hoped it would be. This is probably the best handling scoped rifle I've ever owned. I thought I might miss the variable magnification, but so far that has not been a concern. I usually leave the Vortex set at 4X most of the time anyway. What I do miss is the much wider field of view and the more forgiving eye box of the Vortex. I also think it might be a little brighter than the loophole in low light. So time will tell, I could go either way with it at this point. The uh, Trunk Monkey Sling, I think speaks for itself. It sends a message to all of my vermin adversaries. It says, you better hope I don't shoot as good as I look. The Trunk Monkey Slings are uh, the quick adjust style that you usually see on an AR, but they're also really handy on traditional format rifles like this one. I can easily shorten it up and then kind of use it as a hasty support like that. Or if I'm carrying it around over my shoulder, I can easily cinch it down like that so it really doesn't move much when I'm walking around. I decided to skip the usual sling attachment hardware for this rifle. 
Sling swivels and QD mounts are great, but they always seem to click or squeak at the worst possible moment. So I've just got the sling running through the slot on the buttstock and this loop here I added on the forend. You would think something this basic would be a common accessory, but it took me a while to find one. This is a CQD front sling mount. It's just a simple M-Lock compatible sling loop. Of course, I lose the quick detach capability, but now I can be both silent and deadly. Finally, we've got this uh, plate here at the bottom of the forend. This is a Magpul dovetail adapter for the Arca Swiss interface. That is a dovetail standard used for both camera and rifle tripods. So now, if I wanna lay in wait to ambush some critter, I can just grab a lawn chair and my lightweight Leofoto camera tripod, and I basically have a mobile rifle rest. So far, I am extremely pleased with how this 1022 came out. I almost wanna say it, it might be my new favorite gun, but ask me again after the honeymoon period is over. Fortunately, what makes this platform so great is that if I change my mind about any of the components that I've used, I can swap them out for something different in less than 10 minutes in my garage. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I sure had a lot of fun. If you've put together your own 1022, tell us about it in the comments. I would especially like to hear your thoughts on third-party triggers. Which ones do you like? And uh, do you think they're really worth the cost compared to the Ruger BX trigger? Let me know what you think. And until next time, be sure to get your ammo from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.